Hey Denise, what is the number one thing that we emphasize in our mentoring? Flexibility and versatility in our careers. Top marks. And today, Alice Sinclair is teaching us how to turn our scripts into a novel. Here's one we prepared earlier. Hello, welcome to Running Free Skills. Now today, we are talking about a skill. We are going to speak to all of you writers out there, all of you who've got a screenplay or a drama hidden in your drawers that you've just never known what to do with. What we're gonna do is we're gonna teach you how to turn it into a novel. And why might you be interested in that? Well, last year, Australia released 34 feature films. Last year, the publisher of our very special guest released nearly that many themselves. There is so much more scope to get your work published as a novel. So this could be the perfect time. Now, to talk us through that process of turning your screenplay into a novel, we have got the wonderful author, Ali Sinclair. Hi, Ali. Hi, Esther. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, do you want to talk us through a, a little bit about your career um, and what, what kind of motivates you to write novels? Oh, okay. So my first novel came out in 2014, but it was 10 years and three manuscripts that will never see the live day. <laughs> <laughs> that got me to that point. Um, originally, I had always been interested in writing nonfiction. Um, it was an area I was really quite fascinated with, um, adventure travel. And that was, that was what I was planning to write. I travelled a lot over the years and I was being interviewed by a radio journalist and he actually said to me, you know, have you thought about writing a book? I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> And then what happened was I saw an advertisement with that uh, STA magazine and they were looking for short stories and I thought, why not? Just a short story, 500 words, I can try this. And it got selected. I saw my name in print and then that was the end of me. I knew then <laughs> I was going down the road to hopefully writing a novel that uh, would be published. And I was very excited with the first novel and couldn't, couldn't even think about not trying again and six novels later <laughs> so yeah I'm here I am <laughs> that's that's amazing that's basically you've had one published a year yes that's right yes I uh, book, book a year girl yeah but uh there's always a whole lot of other stories that I've got floating around in my head um some will you know I'll just bury and others I'll explore and it's and that's one of the great parts of being in the creative industries is, is you can always explore ideas and if it goes down a dead end that's okay you can just pick it up another time because sometimes the timing's not right um, or else you might find a brighter shinier object. Okay right we are going to get into it now the very first question is is one that we're going to combat some fear with. So if I've got a screenplay and I turn it into a novel, am I going to scupper my chance of it ever seeing the light of day as a screenplay, as a film or a TV series? Absolutely not. <laughs> Graham Simpson, uh, who wrote The Rosie Project, is, is an amazing example of someone who wrote a screenplay, uh, didn't take it, take him to where he wanted to go so he turned it into a novel it became a massive success and is now being made into a movie so a good story is a good story regardless of, of whether it's a screenplay or a novel but uh yeah definitely your chances are, are still good and it, and it actually helps if you have a book that is, is a success you've shown that you have an audience you've shown that there is a market for your book so it actually enhances your chances what is the difference between a novel and a screenplay in terms of writing styles and content? So a screenplay is a lot shorter uh, and 
there is a lot more concentration on, on dialogue in that regard. So a novel will still use that dialogue, but you actually enhance it with descriptions of what people are doing, uh, you know, how they're saying it, uh, the settings as well. Uh, so that actually sort of comes to life in, in the novel. What, what, are, what are you? Are you a dialogue person or a description person? I am definitely a dialogue person. In fact, my first drafts are very dialogue heavy and then I have to go back and put in the descriptions and um, make them a bit more colourful and uh, sort of fill in the gaps. So have you got, um, have you got an example for us? Yes, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I think we should. I think we should do a baking show next. I've always wanted to do. Here's one I prepared earlier. All right, so we'll start with the screenplay, and it's uh, just a random scene I've pulled from one of my books coming out next year. So, ex external Brisbane Street, Cat Alley Leonard. Streets crowded with revelers dancing, singing, celebrating. Ticker tape falls from the sky. Cat spots Ally in the crowd and greets her with warmth. Cat, fancy meeting you here. Ali, what a day, turns to Leonard. Your family will be so happy to see you. Leonard and Cat exchange glances. Ali is caught up in the electric atmosphere. The war is over. Ali takes a moment to enjoy the excitement and relief of the world finding peace once more. I'll caveat that with why I'm not an actress. <laughs> I'll leave it to the experts. <laughs> All right, so same scene as I wrote in the book. Fancy meeting you here, Cat yelled over the cheese, a smiling Leonard in tow. What a day! Ali hugged Cat, then Leonard. Your family would be so happy to see you. Leonard and Cat exchanged a glance. He reached for Cat's hand and squeezed it. A small square of paper fell on Ali's shoulder and she brushed it off. A few more pieces fluttered from the sky and she looked up to find ticker tape falling like rain from the windows. Ali turned her head towards the heavens and spun, her arms outstretched. This was the moment they'd been working toward for years. The long hours, the uncertainty, the stress, the need to hold closely guarded secrets. It was all worth it. For on this day, the world could breathe once more. Peace at last. Oh my, oh, they're both so beautiful. Oh, and it's, it's so interesting how you can really see how the screenplay and the novel are the same and yet once when you read the screenplay I was like oh yeah I can picture that but when you read the novel I was like oh I can feel that and I can imagine when that's actually on screen that I'd get the same feeling that I that you evoke but with your writing it's such an interesting process isn't it um, when I write my novels, I am very visual. In fact, my publisher often says that I write cinematically uh, because it does play like um, like it's on the screen in, in my head and luckily it comes across in my writing. Um, but, the, but these are all things that, that people can practice and they, and they can learn. And um, it, it's, you know, I, I think if you are a storyteller, you're a storyteller regardless of the medium. I, th I think you're absolutely right. You are, once you, when you've got a story to tell or when you've told a story in, say, screenplay form, you're right. You need to learn some basic skills and some craft to turn that into a really amazing novel. So on that, I've got a screenplay. Where do I go to to learn how to write um, maybe vis visual descriptions or emotional descriptions. Where do I learn? Where do I learn those crafts of novel writing? The first thing I suggest is is read widely. So um, people who've been writing screenplays, I'm sure they would have read hundreds, thousands, who knows how many screenplays, right, to learn the craft. And it's exactly the same with novel writing. And don't always read novels that are perfect well not that any novel is perfect but but don't read novels that are always brilliantly written because sometimes novels that don't appeal to you 
is really good that you can you can study those and you think okay why is that not working for me how would i do it and and then practice write that scene think about how you would do it and that's a really great way to to learn as well um, but there are so many amazing places we're actually so lucky in australia there's a lot of uh state uh writing organizations like here where i am in victoria there's writers victoria there's the queensland writers center lots of different places there's also some other writing organizations as well but um reading 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 <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be the best start and and then enrolling in workshops um hanging out with other writers writers um regardless of whether it's screenplays or or novels uh are, are really they're a friendly bunch they they love they love to talk about their passion because they like talking to other people about things that other people get right like it is very normal for us to have extra voices in our head telling us stories <laughs> It's our tribe. So um, don't ever be afraid to network, um, meet other writers, get involved in workshops, um, go to library visits and meet authors. And now I should also say for anybody watching this, Ali has written a fantastic little tip sheet which she is happy for us to share with anybody. So if you would like the tip sheet, email me at um esther e-s-t-h-e-r at mediamentors.com.au and i will send you out the tip sheet now what about the differences between genres so if i've got a screenplay and it is a romance that will obviously be written in a slightly different style to if i've got a screenplay that i'm turning into a crime novel what are those what are the differences what are the key differences between genres yes each genre does have guidelines let's not call them rules. guidelines <laughs> so generally books need to be for adult fiction need to be between 80 and 100,000 words which probably does sound like a lot but once you're on a roll you'll get there. <laughs> Fantasy is about 140,000. Yeah, so um, in terms of the way they're written, I highly recommend that you read in that genre as well. Uh, romance tends to be quite heavy on um, feelings and emotions, um, whereas mystery will be, you know, hiding some clues, thrillers, you'll find that, you know, that the action is quite fast paced. And so the style of writing will be different. So it'll be short and sharp sentences, uh, those sorts of things. So by studying the genre that you're really interested in writing in, that's going to give you a lot of um, hints about how you need to approach, approach your writing there. Do you... Is your favourite genre to read the same that you write in or not? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't like reading in my genre when I'm working on a book <laughs> because it, it actually shakes my confidence. Uh, I am one of those readers who, if I read something and it's a really amazing sentence or paragraph that I, I sit with it and I just... I reflect on it and I might read it a few more times and go, yeah, I wish I'd written that. <laughs> so for me, I can't read in the genre that I'm writing in at the time, but as soon as I'm off deadline and I've submitted my booking, then yeah, then I'll, I'll read in the genre that I, I really love. Yeah. Um, now, if I'm going from, say, a feature to a novel, will I need to add anything? Do, should I expect to add anything in? Yes, you'll probably find that you'll need to add in some secondary characters. Uh, not a heap, um, but you, you will need to flesh it out a little bit. So uh, if you look at a, a feature as the bones of a novel, uh, then you can flesh it out with extra characters and, and more descriptions and those sorts of things, yeah. And what about if I've written a TV drama series? Ah... Uh, <laughs> this is where the delete button <laughs> is your friend. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably find that you'll, you'll need to narrow it down to um, 
a lot less characters. Uh, but I will say if you are aiming to write an entire series, you could possibly look at giving each of your main characters from the TV series their own story in each book. But I suggest let's just concentrate on one book, get that one done first. <laughs> But if you've got the idea of the series in mind, you can always bring those characters in later. Okay. So how, how long does it take to write a novel? How, how long should I be um, scheduling in my diary? Oh, it depends how much time you've got. I think now's a really good time for people to start. <laughs> um, my first novel, I... I was working full time, so I, I, I wrote it over probably a period of about 18 months. And that was my apprenticeship novel. We'll never see the light of day, and that's cool. I don't mind because I learned a lot with that. Um, for me, I mean, I, I write full time now. So for me, I prob probably spend 12 months off and on researching because my novels do have a lot of fact in them and a lot of historical and cultural uh, information in there. Once I've got all the information I need, I always have a really, really strong plot, uh, plot line written out. To write full time, it probably took me about six months, but then I need to go back and probably revise it another three times once my publishers read it and they give me their input, <laughs> which is great. And, you know, like screenwriting, you've got to have a thick skin. You've just got to take the feedback. And usually the feedback that you react the most strongly to is, is usually the feedback that you need to hear the most. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, so I've got my, I've spent six months or a year writing it. What format should it be in? Because obviously most people who work in screenplays um, work in final draft. Yes. So uh, the general accepted industry standard is uh, Word, Microsoft Word, and 12 point Times New Roman, everything's double spaced, uh, indents of 1.27 centimetres. You can tell I've done this before. <laughs> um, Yes, so it is, it is quite different, um, but I don't know of any other publishers or literary agents who expect the, the manuscript to be in any other form. So it's good in that regard that it's right across the board. So once you've formatted it once, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now, do I need to write the whole thing before I send it to anyone or can I just send, like, do a couple of chapters? Definitely for a first time author, you need to write the whole story. The literary agent or the publisher need to know that you can write a full manuscript, that you can actually finish it. There are a lot of people who start and never finish, which is cool. But um, in order to get a sale, yes, you definitely need to finish the whole thing. They also want to see how the story hangs together because sometimes we have this thing called a saggy middle which nearly every author I know suffers from. And uh, that's when the pacing really slows down. Maybe, you know, a plot thread gets left behind. So they want to see how, how that works. And these are things that can be fixed. But I guess what they want to do is see how much work it needs in terms to fix that, whether they're willing to invest that time or not. All right. So I've got my novel. I've finished it, finally. What do I do? Should I share it with somebody? Should I get some feedback? Should, how do I know when it's ready to go? Definitely you always need an extra pair of eyes or three or four uh, because, you know, it doesn't matter how experienced uh, someone is at writing, you'll find there are things that you just don't, don't see that, that you can miss that other people can pick up on and can help you improve. Uh, so for someone starting out, it's really good to get involved with uh, writers' organisations and, and find what we call a critique partner. And so you, you swap each other's work and it doesn't matter if you're both starting out because you can still bring so much to the table. Um, so a critique partner can be really handy and then you need to revise quite a few times. <laughs> I, I would say if you're starting out, you probably need to revise at least six, seven times. Um, but when you get to the point where you're 
shifting around commas and, you know, substituting one word for another. That's, that's the little finicky things and you're not making big sweeping changes. Then it's, it's time. You got to let it go. You got to let it out into the world. All right. So that's it. I'm now just faffing around with commas. Tell me about the tradition. There are two publishing routes. So there's traditional and non-traditional. So tell me, start off, tell me about the traditional publishing route. So I'm published in the traditional manner. So what that means is I have a literary agent who represents me and she contacts publishing houses and speaks with the editors, find out what they're looking for. Then she, you know, gives my book a great hey guess what i've got this book you're all gonna love it so she gets tries to get the editors all enthused um and so my books are available in bookshops and also as ebooks and audio books as well um they're published around the world in different languages um and with with traditional publishing the money comes to you hopefully a lot of money, but the <laughs> money does come to you. Um, whereas whereas self-publishing is a little bit different in that regard. So self-publishing is where you you are a one-person one shop. So you will hire somebody to uh, do your cover, hire an editor to go through your story and help you with that. Uh, you do all the marketing, you do the whole thing, all your own PR. So with self-publishing, I know that in the past it was really hard to make a living. Is it actually feasible to make a living through self-publishing today? It is possible. Um, I do know quite a few authors who, who are really doing amazingly well with self-publishing, but they live and breathe it pretty much 24 hours a day and it's a long hard slog um but so traditional publishing as well so it really is a personal choice as as to which road you want to go down but yes certainly there are authors traditional and self-published who are doing really really well um so tell me how i get um either a literary agent or i get into or i find a publisher tell me about pitch friday Oh, yes. So some of the publishers in Australia have certain days where you can pitch directly to them. So uh, I do suggest, though, highly recommend you need to have your novel finished and ready to go and as polished as can be because if uh, a publishing house or a literary agent wants to read it, they want to read it there and then, they don't want you to say, oh, actually, you know, three months, I'll send it to you. It'll be ready then. They, they want to stroke while the iron's hot and you, you want to take advantage of their enthusiasm for sure. So even though people say, oh, yeah, there's so many barriers, you know, to getting published, um, I think if you look at it as they're just looking for a great story, just write the great story. <laughs> My question is, how do you get the courage to do it? How do you go, you know what, I believe in this story, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to put the hard work in without any guarantee of reward, I'm going to have the courage to share my ideas with the world. How do you find that inside you? Because I think that that's, like we all know that there are barriers to publishing, there are barriers to getting your screenplay made, and yet we all know that they do happen. So it's got to be what is it that, that gets you over the line to do it? I would say it's the passion for your story, that you, you want to share it with the world. And if you fully believe in it, you'll, you'll dig deep. You'll, you'll find that courage. I, uh, probably about two, three years ago, I made a year of kind of feeling the fear and doing it anyway and stepping out of my comfort zone and that year I have made some amazing contacts in lots of different uh, industries and it's it's been fantastic and I, I know it's really really difficult and you know what when I send off my manuscript to my editor uh, every time I'm like <laughs> send and, I, and I'm always Filled, like filled with, with self-doubt. But I think what helped me was I met uh, an author I really admire a few years ago and she'd had like a night bestseller out and I had 
uh, I've always like devoured her books, just thought they were amazing. So she was kind of up on a pedestal for me. And it was just after my first book had come out and we were chatting about it. And she was saying how she's nervous with every single book that comes out. I mean, she's the international bestseller. It's crazy. And she's nervous every single time. She feels like someone's going to turn around and say, oh, you're a fraud. <laughs> and I thought, wow, if she thinks this, then maybe that's just a normal state <laughs> for, for authors. And I just need to embrace it. And, and live with it and just feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> oh, Ali, and on, that, that is such a good ending for us. That is, because I, I really believe that. I think we just have to do things that we're scared of because there's no other way to be when you're talking about a creative endeavour. That's, that's, that's so true. Absolutely. And I always feel that, you know, if, if you don't give it a shot, how will you ever know? How, how will you ever know if you could have done it? Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I really love talking to you. Um, as I said in the earlier, if you would like Ali's cheat sheet of tips, you can email me and I will send it out. That's esther at mediamentors.com.au. Um, thanks to Acme for letting us do these. And thank you to Ali. I've loved talking to you. Take care. Oh, thank you. Bye.